clearly we played a, a nice ball game. It's not easy to do that. You know, you have to go earn every run and make every pitch and make the plays. And we did a nice job from pitch one till the end. Had a lot of guys get opportunities to get onto the field and move around a little bit. Some guys on the mound for the first time. So you're happy with a game like that. It's not easy to have games like that. You clearly saw some of the capabilities that they had. They had a variety of arms, and the last guy they brought in is throwing 97 miles an hour with an 89 mile an hour slider. So you don't see that anywhere every day, and not to mention in a game like this, that's their back end guy, and they wanted to give him some work. So that was impressive. And, and I'm proud of the way our guys went about it because you have to go make things happen in these games. And the fourth inning, our base running was probably the moment that excited me the most when we had the base load and nobody out. And you're wanting somebody to hit a ball in the gap or hit one in the corner or hit one in the in the trees, but mm, that doesn't always happen. Ben Barrett, fly ball to right, all of our guys tagged up on time. The throw was a little high, so then we end up second and third with a, another run on the board. Carry on, steps on a ball to right field. And again, both runners tag immediately. That was a tricky tagging situation because the ball was hit so hard. So then we end up with a runner on third and two outs and Cade Bush gets the hit. So just the game within the game for me, I was really pleased with, with moments like that. Uh, Jamie Arnold coming in with a little more velocity was good to see. And uh, some of our other guys pitched well. So the, that, that kind of stuff kind of gets you a little bit more excited than even the home runs. And yeah, I, I like the home runs. I, I'm looking for more than that because there's games that you play where that's not happening. So how do you manufacture in an inning where you don't get a ton of hits to score some critical runs? And I like that. And those are things we talk – you don't know how much we work on and talk about some of those plays. Those are routine catches for the right fielder. So you have to take advantage of the fact that there is a play at the plate. They're going to throw those balls to the plate. And if they decide to cut it, then you take the run because they're cutting the ball. And if they don't cut it, then you should hopefully score and end up moving up in every facet to create other opportunities. If that puts it to four and you end the game at, with four runs, you know, you might win the ball game four to two, four to three. And that might be a difference in a huge game along the way. How, how encouraging is, I mean, you're, I'm sure this is the time of year you're hoping you start seeing more of those things happen, kind of going into ACC play this week and how encouraging it, seeing more of that, maybe an entire game like that. Well, I saw two things. I saw the bunny, like Nander, we've been working on that. And I don't know how much, it's, I mean, he's only been with us since January 10th. I've never seen the guy before that. So we're trying and he needs to be able to do it. And he put down a nice one today and hit a home run. And you don't see many games where a guy, the same guy has a base hit bunny and a home run. So. That was nice. He almost had a second base hit run. We tried some other bunning stuff that didn't work. So I, I do see glimpses of today's example, the base running, really nice. Vincent and we double stole at some point, full count, nobody out, which we saw a triple. <laughs> we saw TCU or whoever hit into a triple play. Um, so it's a little risky to run there, but it turned out to be a beneficial thing. So I am seeing some traction. I'm not seeing a complete package yet offensively, but I do see moments where we're doing things better. Starting David, how, how much of that was just trying to get him out there with a clean start and see what he could do one time through the lineup, I guess? Every bit of it. And we weren't trying to get one time through the lineup. The guy's throwing 92 to 95 miles an hour, and he's got a really nice little slider. We're trying to harness that, and we thought maybe instead of the bullpen and warm up to come in in the sixth inning or the fifth inning and dealing with that sense a clean start and then warm up opportunity to do whatever you want to do before the game to then get on the mound do what you need to do there and work your way down and start it um he was behind in the count the whole time he made some big pitches early to kind of get himself off the hook but i mean he'll be the first to tell you it, it wasn't sharp we were trying to let him go we had to let him go if he could have gotten four or five innings, that would have been just fine. So, still a work in progress for him, but he's working at it. After a challenging weekend, were you anxious to see how the guys kind of came back in this week? Or yes, you... I'm anxious to see how they show up every day. Each one of these games has to be treated like it's a championship level 
competition, and that's how you string together good performances. Like the focus, you have to find it, and you have to manage to play clean baseball like we did today, and you have to you have to execute pitches. So yeah, every time we come out here, I'm hopeful that we start to see that. And we've had some really tough games. This was. I mean, the TCU game was the same score as this, I think, but that was different. You're on the road, and you know that team. Like, you kind of had used some of your bullpen, so you're like, okay, we need to keep it right here. Other than that, um, the JU game might have separated a little bit, but we've had a bunch of dogfights. So repeating elite type of performances is the key if you want to become an elite team. It can't be sporadic. It can't be for parts of games. It's got to be on point every time they walk down those steps and and head out there to compete. So it was good to see that today. You, you've talked a lot about your team's pitching depth. How nice was it seeing that group of six guys, maybe not, not, not using Wyatt, not using Connor, and seeing them, I mean, being one out away from a shutout tonight. No, it was really good. And we're still feeling out, I mean, obviously some of these guys for the first time ever stepping on that mound in college, like you're trying to figure out what Drake Flowers is going to bring to the table. And we haven't seen Brandon in a, in a game this year, I don't believe. You, know, you see a lot in, in practice, so we, we evaluate and we have our way of gauging who is performing the best in our training settings to give the guys that appear to be doing so the chances to go out in the game. And it was neat to see those guys go work. They work so hard. And you know we have, what, 16 or I don't know how many healthy pitchers available, and every one of them wants to be out there. And then they want to fight for the roles, different roles that they think they could compete in and help our team. So there's always a competitive piece, and, and today you got two guys that started their season and got good innings. Drake learned immediately when that ball's up, that's what can happen. Like he had a chance to clean the game up and end with a nice shutout, and he left too many pitches up and found himself in trouble. So. Some of the learning moments are negative feeling for them, but it's a positive moment overall because we can't duplicate the feeling of giving up that run in practice. It's just out there for everybody to see, and the pitch execution is even heightened more. The way you guys have used Jamie, I think he started a night game, started multiple afternoon games, and then came out of the bullpen today. How much of, is that just building experience and trying to get him to know how to pitch out multiple different roles? I mean, that's a lot of it, Brett. He also wants to throw. He doesn't care when or how or where. The guy wants to pitch. And I think I saw that, in essence, on the last three pitches he threw. Like, that was 93, 4, and 5. And he probably knew that was it. We weren't going to leave him out there too long. But he, he wants the ball in his hand and wants to pitch, whether that's starting the game or – Today in a relief role, we'll figure out what the what the smartest thing is. That was really fun to watch in that role, and it gives you another. If he is not starting, it gives you another clearly dynamic. That was pretty dynamic lefty to come out of the pen. That below bump did it surprise you a little bit? Yeah, it did. It did. It did, it did surprise me in a positive way. And now he learned what it feels like to reach in there and try to dial it up. Sometimes you're on the. You're on the 17th tee, and you reach back for a little bit more to try to make the par five reachable in two. It doesn't always go how you want it. Well, when he reached back for a little more today, it was on point. So that was good for him to feel that, and he'll grow from there. But he knows it's in there, and he knows how to go get it. That was fun.